Good morning, Classical High School. I'm really excited that we're all gonna be back learning together in the building this year. I can't wait to use all the technological tools and everything we learned last year while still having the ability to really collaborate and be together. I'm so excited and I think this is gonna be an amazing year. We're really excited to all be back in the building together this year. We want you to know that we're gonna be working closely with Central Administration and the Lynn Board of Health in order to keep us all safe. We also are going to continue to use our one-to-one -one technology so we can continue to accelerate learning. You'll need to bring your computers every day. We're going to be adopting a new schedule that I believe will support both safety guidelines and really improve academics here at Classical High School. We're excited to also be learning together with you this year and starting to implement blended learning. Our new schedule is a college style schedule that will reduce student movement and promote COVID safety practices while still allowing students to take a wide variety of courses. Students will have classes A through D, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday and Friday will be traditional days that run from 7.45 to 2.30, while Wednesday will have shortened classes and be our weekly early release. Students will be leaving at 12.30 and they'll have the option of a grab and go lunch that day. Classes E, F, and G are on Tuesdays and Thursdays and will be long block. We look forward to learning with you in this new schedule. As we enter this new school year, we still want to make sure that we're keeping health and safety practices at the forefront. So with this being said, if you're entering to go to your mentoring room, we want everyone to split up to cohorted doors to keep traffic down to a minimum. So if your mentoring room is located in the A hallway, you should use the front lobby doors to enter in the front of the school in the circle. If your mentoring room is in the B hallway, you should enter through the nurse's door entrance that's located in the large side parking lot. The C hallway, you should also be in the large side parking lot and you want to enter through the gym doors. If your room is located in the D hallway, you should enter through the nurse's doors as well, um, also located in the large side parking lot. If we can continue to follow these practices, it'll help keep our community safe. In order for us to reduce the amount of students that uh, have contact every day, we are gonna be allowing students in the junior and senior year, if they have a first period study hall or a last period study hall to either come in late or leave early. Students are welcome to come here and have a supervised study hall in the cafeteria or the library if they want to work here. We're hoping that this flexibility allows students to work from home, allows students to do get to work a little bit earlier, and also have some volunteer experiences. If your study hall is in the middle of the day, once you've signed in, you will be required to stay on campus. As the ability to come in late or leave early for study halls is new, I wanted to go into this with a little bit more detail. So for juniors and seniors, on Mondays and Fridays, if you have an A period study hall, you will be allowed to arrive by 925 if you choose. You must sign in in the front lobby at the attendance desk. If you have a D period study hall on Mondays and Fridays, you will be allowed to leave at one o'clock. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, arrival time for late students with an E-period study hall will be by 9.55. Again, sign-in procedure will be to sign in in the front lobby at the attendance desk. Dismissals that day on Tuesdays and Thursdays, students can leave at 12.30 with a grab-and-go lunch. Wednesday's arrival will be a little bit different as it's a shortened day as all students will be leaving at 12.30. So students with an A period study hall must be here by 8.55 and students with a D period study hall can leave at 11.30. All students will be leaving early that day and will have the option of a grab and go lunch as they leave. Mentoring room is back and will start at 7.45. You are late for school if you're not sitting in your mentoring room by 7.55. All students will report to their mentoring room on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. for advisory. This is a new piece in our schedule. In advisory, you will use that time to build relationships with your classmates and with your mentoring room teachers. Mentors will connect you to school resources. They'll check in regarding your grades and your attendance and any other issues you're having at school. We'll also be working on MyCAP work, which is 
ex is self-exploration and looking at college and careers as we move towards what we might like to do at the end of high school. And we will also participate in some social emotional learning together. We'll also have important updates about our community during this time. We will have a few breakfast options this year. Students who report on time between 7.15 and 7.35 will be provided a hot breakfast option in the cafeteria. Students can then choose to eat in the cafeteria or out in the tents. Students who arrive between 7.35 and 7.45 can take a grab and go breakfast as they sign into school. Students who have a first period study hall and are allowed to come in late uh, will be able to take a grab and go breakfast up until 15 minutes before second period begins. Second periods are B or E. We will continue to have four lunches and we will also have an outside option in the tents as long as weather and coverage permits. All tables will have QR codes for students to scan in in order to do contact tracing in case of someone being sick. Students will also will be able to unmask while they're eating, but then when they're finished, they'll have to remask as they're talking and finishing up their time in the cafeteria. On Wednesdays, we will have an early release day and students will get a grab and go lunch as they leave the building. All students will continue to need to pass it when they go to the bathroom. When they get to the bathroom, there will be a QR code that they can scan in. There will also be clipboards available for students that don't have phones. Students will continue to wear their masks while they're in the restroom. Bathrooms will be limited to stall capacity, so any extra students beyond the capacity should wait in line six feet apart until someone leaves the bathroom. We started using QR codes last year. If you remember picking up your summer reading book, you scanned a QR code in order to sign in and let us know that you received your book. This year, we'll be using QR codes frequently for contact tracing. So in order for us to know where students are and traveled in the building, they'll need to scan the codes. Some places you will see these are on the lunch tables, in the bathrooms you go in, and in your classrooms. All students will have to be signed into their Office 365 account when they scan in. If you're not logged in, it will ask you to type in your ID. Students without phones will be able to be scanned in by another person or will be physically signed in. All faculty and students will need to wear masks regardless of their vaccination status. This will be reevaluated throughout the year in relationship to the number of community members we have vaccinated and to the incidence of COVID throughout the community. Masks must be worn appropriately. They have to be over your nose, cover your full mouth, and no gaiters are allowed. Masks may be taken off when eating in the lunchroom, but need to be put back on when you finish. Know that we're all smiling underneath these masks. At the beginning of the school year, you will receive several important forms that you need to either return to school or use daily. First is your an emergency form. This is an important form that you need to fill out in its entirety and return to your mentoring teacher. This form will be used by the main office in the case of dismissals. It will be used by the nurse in case of need for medication, and it will also allow us to contact guardians or family in the case of an emergency. You must sign it on both sides, it's very important. You'll also receive an at-home checklist that goes over COVID symptoms. You're, you need to look at that daily and make sure that you don't have any of those symptoms. If you do have those symptoms, you need to eat, stay home from school and contact the nurse. You'll also receive a form that goes over response protocols that outlines if you have this, this symptom, what you do next, who you contact, what testing needs to happen. Another important form is the testing consent form. We are hoping that all community members consent to testing so that we can identify members in the community early that have COVID and that we can keep um, COVID to a minimum and everyone safe. Finally, make your time here at LCHS count. It is hugely important that you take your academics seriously right from the start. The grades and the GPA that you earn now are what's gonna represent you in the future to colleges, future employers, and other endeavors after high school. You should definitely join a sport, a club, or an activity. Uh, classical will be so much more fun when you're invested in the community and it's a great way to meet new friends. You should work closely on building relationships with staff and other students. This is a community of support, friendship, and learning. 
And finally, welcome to the Ram Fam. We're really excited that you chose Classical.